just a light touch reflection for this weekend as I still am giving a bit of testing to this uh, Kindle machine which let us down on a service a few weeks ago. So I'm still just feeling my way with the technology to see whether that was a one-off occurrence or whether there was a more likely problem emerging with it. The thought for this weekend is a question. The gardener of the world? Question mark. And a single sentence Bible quote. In this work, we work with God. And that means you are a field under God's cultivation. That is 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9 in the J.B. Phillips translation. Last weekend it was a joy to have a prize giving at church, with books presented to our faithful young attenders. I have in my possession a book of poems for children. One at school as a third prize award in general excellence the label tells me, in session 1961 to 62. The book, A Child's Garden of Verses, is a book of poems for children by Robert Louis Stevenson, first published in 1885. Taking it off the bookshelf and thumbing through it on one of these splendid summer days of sunshine, my eye was drawn to this little poem entitled Summer Sun. Great is the sun and wide he goes through empty heaven without repose and in the blue and glowing days more thick than rain he showers his rays. Though closer still the blinds we pull to keep the shady parlour cool, yet he will find a chink or two to slip his golden fingers through. The dusty attic, spider clad, he through the keyhole maketh glad, and through the broken edge of tiles into the laddered hayloft smiles. Meantime, his golden face around he bears to all the garden ground and sheds a warm and glittering look among the ivy's inmost nook. Above the hills, along the blue, round the bright air with footing true to please the child, to paint the rose, the gardener of the world, he goes. A good poem, I think, and fine words. But here's a question. Ought we really to consider the sun as the gardener of the world? That seems to fit with the worldview of a writer from the Romantic era. Wikipedia tells me that Stevenson was a neo-romantic. The sun watches over us bestowing the goodness of its rays over the earth, thus making nature bring forth its bounty. A lovely picture. But on a week when parts of Europe have had their worst floods ever, with many lives lost, how do we reconcile that benign view of nature? with the complexities of global warming which increasingly seem evident right around our world. A biblical view, going right back to Genesis 3, would surely rather place humanity as the gardener in the world that God has provided for us. A world that produces thorns and thistles as well as flowers and fruit. As I can testify, having just spent an afternoon pulling up weeds aplenty. And when it comes to global warming, 
it becomes clear that over many, many decades, we humans have not exactly made a very great job of cultivating the earth. It is increasingly clear that humans are influencing the climate and the earth's temperature by burning fossil fuels, cutting down forests and farming livestock. We all have an imperative to play our own part in doing a better job of world gardening. Here's another thought. Have you ever thought of your life in this way? As a garden of the Lord. Writer Cory Ten Boom was strongly inspired by a couple of sentences from the London preacher Charles Spurgeon. She wrote these words. We are like gloves that are filled with a hand and that hand is the Holy Spirit. The joy is when we surrender to the Lord. He does the job to change our wilderness into his garden and it is he who will make our lives fruitful in the kingdom. Do not expect the gardener's full help unless you are fully dependent upon him. And here is the couple of sentences from Charles Spurgeon. Oh, to have one's soul under heavenly cultivation. No wilderness, but a garden of the Lord, walled around by grace, planted by instruction, visited by love, weeded by heavenly discipline, and guarded by divine power. One's soul thus favoured is prepared to yield fruit to the glory of God. Are you ready to pray that prayer of Spurgeon's? And now I'd like to finish with a very short prayer that comes from the Anglican Church in Australia. Creator God, you formed us from the dust of the earth and reveal your fingerprints in all flesh. Teach us your deep wisdom in the order and beauty of all that you have made. When our care for your creation is found wanting, reprove and reform us so that our footprints may be more gentle on the earth, tending and keeping it as your own handiwork. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>